Uh, give me a good mix, a little Worcestershire and a you know a little extra, um, uh-huh. little extra horseradish, and I'm happy. Yeah, I'm getting thirsty, Crayon. No, <laughs> <laughs> parched. Gosh, <laughs> we need a little bar cart in the studio. Yeah, where is our bar cart? <laughs> There's plenty of room in here. We could get one. I'm Robin Sussingham, and this is the Zest. Citrus, seafood, Spanish flavor, and southern charm. The Zest celebrates cuisine and community in the Sunshine State. Fall is almost here, but as usual, Florida did not get the memo. We've got ideas, though, to get you through what is seeming like an endless heat wave when you really don't feel like cooking. Smoked fish dip, easy mango ice cream, and fun, colorful mocktails. Simple recipes packed with a Florida flavor today on The Zest. Support for The Zest podcast comes from Seitenbacher brand Natural Foods, like muesli cereals, oils, oatmeal, energy bars, gluten-free, fruit gummies for the kids, organic coffee, and more. Available in supermarkets, health food stores, or online at seitenbacher.com. Let's count all the ways that we love mangoes. They are great in salads, chutneys, or straight from the tree. With Florida's mango season stretching from May to October, the fruit can help us get through this final stretch of summer heat. Blogger Danielle Rose, who writes about Florida foods on her blog, Swanee Rose, came up with another refreshing way to use mangoes, her no-churn mango vanilla bean ice cream. It's dairy-free, it smells wonderful, and it tastes even better, as our producer Delia Cologne found out when she visited Danielle's kitchen on Tampa's Davis Islands. Today we're going to make a mango ice cream that's no churn, so you don't have to have an ice cream maker. Um, All you need is some mango, it can be frozen or fresh, and a vanilla bean or vanilla extract. Vanilla beans are really expensive lately, so... Vanilla extract works just fine. A little bit of cold coconut cream and a tiny pinch of salt. And then we'll use a either a high powered blender or a food processor and blend it all up and then freeze it just a little bit longer so it's nice and scoopable. And there you go, fresh mango ice cream. Okay. Do you happen to know what kind of mangoes we're using today? So this one right here is called a Nam Dok Mai. It's a Thai variety that is so good. They're really like a dessert quality mango. And you're a native Floridian? Yes. I knew it when I asked you what kind of mangoes we're using because (laughs) not everyone would have an answer to that question. (laughs) Yeah, uh, my grandmother always had mangoes and her tree is a kit tree in her backyard, the big, you know, old kit mango tree that a lot of us have seen around. And when I met my husband, he also had a kit mango tree, a big old one. So yeah, we're very excited about that. So, okay, so what do we need to do for this no churn mango vanilla bean ice cream? Well, first I thought I'd talk about slicing mangoes because um, they they can be tricky. And sometimes I see people um, peel them first, which isn't a good idea because you've got this awkward shape that suddenly is very slimy and can roll off the cutting board and they have a pit in the middle which is kind of funny so you have to kind of have an idea where that pit is so I stand it up like this which is upright and I go right next to the stem and I find the cheek which is you know if you look at a mango it's got cheeks on each side of that pit And you can kind of see that once you have that in mind. So you slice right alongside the pit. Oh, that's a perfect mango. (laughs) So juicy. So there's one cheek. And then along the other side of that pit, we have two cheeks. You want to take those cheeks. I like slices, so I go lengthwise. I score it a few times. And then I take a spoon and just scoop against the skin and pop out all those slices, just like that. And done. Wow. Okay. This was productive for me already. I learned something. (laughs) You've got like these beautiful, uh, maybe half inch slices that are probably easy to work with, whether you're just going to eat it plain or put it in your blender. Or in your freezer. So for this recipe, 
We're going to take those and put them on a baking sheet and just pop it in the freezer until they're frozen. Or you can put them in Ziplocs and, you know, break it up that way. I already have some in the freezer, so we're going to take those out. Okay. <laughs> These are actually Glen mangoes, so they have a different color. They're a little darker orange. They almost look like sweet potatoes. It's just a bunch of sliced <laughs> yeah, mango really on a fire. baking sheet. So take them off the baking sheet and load it up in the blender. Okay. Let's go. And you need a strong blender when you're doing something with frozen fruit. I see you're using a Vitamix, which I also have at home and get a lot of use out of. I, used, I just used it this morning. So you would, so would want to use a strong blender or a food processor. Definitely. Okay, so now you're chiseling <laughs> the mango pieces off the baking sheet, the frozen mango pieces. More than a okay, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna probably have to grunt to get this <laughs> here. You so gotta right just now. imagine how refreshing it's gonna taste after yeah, all this work. Exactly, it's so hot out, so it needs to be about I'd say five to six cups of frozen mango is ideal. But you know, if you've got more or less, just go with it and you know, cut back on the coconut cream if you do a little less. So, you've got the coconut cream can in the refrigerator, so it's nice and cold. Yes. How'd you come up with this recipe? You know, it came from, have you ever heard of nice cream? Yes, with bananas. Yes. Love it. You do? Frozen, so, it's like frozen banana, just in the blender. Exactly. That's it. One so, ingredient. I love nice cream, but this is great too, and it's still dairy-free. Yes. Vegan, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Yep, vegan. <laughs> so um, I don't disturb that can of coconut cream when I take it out of the fridge, and so the cream on top is nice and cold and scoopable. So don't shake the can as you open it and get that ready so you can just lift the cream off like that. So you're not using the entire can. You're just lifting no, the cream. I and leave, um, so it separates in the fridge, and I leave all that um, clear kind of liquid in the bottom. And you can save that and put it in smoothies or do something else with it. You know, don't waste it, of course. No. Now we're going to get all this mango into the blender. I'm smelling the flavors together already. Like it's not even mixed yet, and I can already smell how the coconut and the mango are going to play together, and it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, and we haven't even scraped the vanilla bean, which is like, to me, that's the, the real kicker. Smell that. It mm. smells so good. Mm. You can see. <laughs> so good. Oh, it's it. just pure vanilla. Oh, just these. pure vanilla. Yeah. That smells like you just walked into an ice cream shop. Yes. So. It's like your own little home ice cream shop. And this yeah. would be really pretty to serve to company too because of that nice bright orangey yellow yeah. color. And then this gives you the little speckles like, you know, Briar's vanilla. So it's oh, wow. I can't waste any of this. Of no, course, absolutely. So. <laughs> Each bean is worth like yeah, 25 cents. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it, it's expensive, but at the same time, to me, it's just like absolutely worth it yeah and if you're only using a few ingredients each ingredient has to really like bring it you know that's true. there's that's not true. room for any slackers yeah and you know you wouldn't want to overpower mango but vanilla just enhances definitely oh and i forgot there's one more thing i always add is a little pinch of salt oh those smells you know what this would make such a great candle wouldn't it <laughs> absolutely there's a candle i would love so now we're going to scoop in that cold coconut cream. And a little bit of the soft stuff is fine, too. I'm just going to go for it. Are we ready for this? <laughs> Let's do it. Put that top on there nice yeah, and tight. <laughs> so can you explain what you would scoop it into? So I like to use like a loaf pan. Like I use, this is my banana bread pan. So I put it in that because once you freeze it and get it a little solid, you can get a good, nice, long scoop. Like you see in like gelato places, you know, they use those shallow pans. So I, I like to do it that way so I can, you know, scoop and oh, yeah. put it in a cone and sprinkles or whatever you want to do. Oh, what a great idea. You could maybe even slice it. I've done other ice cream desserts where you slice it, put it on a plate with like some little cookies or something. That's a fantastic idea. Or raspberries. I don't know. <laughs> like a raspberry sauce on top. Oh, yes. Really That's when so fancy people are coming over. Yeah, I'm not exactly. fancy, so let's just do it we the way you normally do. So. Okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at that. You're scooping it into the cone. And you can see the little flecks of vanilla bean. It feels like yes. a healthy dessert. It's the kind of thing you could do 
every night, really, and not feel guilty. <laughs> Absolutely. Trust me, I never skip dessert. So there we have it. Okay, we're doing the taste test. We got yeah. it in some there little dishes here, so cheers. Cheers. We think? can't even, we're speechless. <laughs> so refreshing, so creamy. You can taste the fruitiness of the mango. And the vanilla bean makes you feel like you're really eating ice cream. <laughs> it is uncanny, isn't it? It doesn't seem like pure fruit and a little bit of coconut cream would make something that good. No dairy at all. It's crazy. It's the exact. And actually, no added sugar either. That's right. No, just nature's, it's like nature's candy. <laughs> Absolutely. Mangoes are the best. And it's the exact consistency of ice cream. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Danielle Rose. This was literally a treat. Oh, thank you so much for being here. That was so much fun. That was blogger Danielle Rose speaking with our producer, Dalia Colon. You can find the recipe for Danielle's no-churn mango vanilla bean ice cream on our website, thezestpodcast.com. And for more great Florida recipes, check out Danielle's website, swanierose.com. Mocktails are all the buzz. See what I did there? Non-alcoholic beverages can now offer all the flavor and Instagram-worthy glamour of their traditional counterparts, minus the need for a designated driver. Restaurants have begun offering sophisticated mocktail menus, and sober bars are sprouting up as an alternative to the usual social scene. I recently spoke with blogger and entertainment expert Crail Funch about how to provide mocktails for guests. Crail Funch is here in the studio with me. Hi, Crail. Hi, how are you doing today, Robin? I'm doing fine, and uh, I think we're going to talk about... When we really, uh, it's a hot day, uh, we want to drink a cocktail, but you know, we're out in the sun and maybe that alcohol isn't such a good idea right now. <laughs> maybe we're thinking a mocktail. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and those are popular right now. They're very popular. And as you said, it's great for any time of day, um, especially in the heat, but it's also um Really interesting offering for guests who may not be may, may not be drinking. You know, a lot of times people we kind of neglect the people who aren't drinking. You know, our fun alcohol. We put out wine. We put out all kinds of spirits. We put out maybe even a signature cocktail. But we kind of for, and we put out maybe a bottle of Pellegrino. That's our fancy you know non alcoholic drink. But um, like I said, a lot of my family members have chosen not to drink. So for the holidays, I've kind of challenged myself to make things a little bit more fun for them. And I set up a separate little bar for them oh. where everything there is non-alcoholic. And so either the adults or kids are welcome to all of that. But then it makes it a little special for them. And then they're not over here like, oh, OK, in between the rosé, you know, what do I have to drink? So I juice. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you think, OK, the mixer should be enough. And most yeah. of the time it is. You know, no one's really complaining. But I've set up um, water bars for friends of mine. And those are just, there's so many different um, beautiful, attractive bottles of water. And whether it's still water or sparkling, you can mix those in. And then I just do a little little variety. And so I do a nice display, have some ice cubes, some on ice, some room temperature. And then they're able to kind of select what they like. You know, and it's interesting. You know, there's it looks festive. It looks festive, and it's something interesting for them to, you know, kind of try and talk about. It. It's a little little topic starter. So you can do that with, a, you know, pre-made bottled water, um, or you can do iced, uh, kind of infused ice water. So, they, again, really pretty beverage um, containers or just regular pitchers, and you might want to label them. But something you can infuse, you just add a little ice to your pitcher or, or beverage dispenser, and then you add in... I just had a um, blueberry, cucumber, and lime um, mm. water. And then you just, you know, so add those ingredients in and then the water. And then just chill it overnight or so. And then that is really tasty and refreshing. Something different for non-drinkers, but also, as you said, hydrating uh, and maybe in between a glass of wine or beer or something like that. And those infusions... Um Cucumber is a big one right now, and yeah. basil. Right. Um, but they need some time to infuse. Like you said, overnight would right. be, would be so good. So the citrus seem to, t they're very, you know, juicy, and they kind of take the flavor right away. Yeah. Okay. So, but, so if you're, you know, short on time. But if you mm -hmm. um, have the, the chance to um, do it the night before, then, yeah, like the blueberry was, I don't think I've ever even really done the blueberry. And it really added a really, really nice, a surprisingly nice it. flavor. Yeah. yeah. And they didn't, um, they were just whole blueberries. Yeah. 
That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. So those are kind of easy, you know, go to um, not it doesn't take a lot of work, maybe a little bit of prep to purchase um, the items. But other than that, <clears throat> won't take too much uh, extra effort. An iced tea bar is also kind of fun. Put out your regular iced tea and then um, include infused simple syrups. So maybe a peach simple syrup, a lavender simple syrup, something, and then label those. And then those are nice little additions to the iced tea bar. Great. And an easy way to flavor the iced tea. Right. Yes. Yes. So mocktails, right? So those are all kind of standard items. So let's get into the fun um, you know, mocktails. So um, again, it, it just depends upon your level of interest in how much time you want to <laughs> put into it. But an easy one is to um, take some of the, you know, frozen um, lemonade, whether it's pink or white, and then add in strawberries to that. So you kind of puree the strawberries, add in a couple scoops of the um, uh, the frozen or the defrosted make sure you want to use it and so that has enough sweetness in it and then you could just add club soda to that you can make a picture of that add the strawberries on the side and that's a really kind of refreshing a little bit on the sweet side so but sometimes that's nice to have a little sweetness in there so you said frozen lemonade so you know those like um like minute made you know those kind of like frozen you mean the condensed the ones that you just mix with water and you just make a pitcher of lemonade exactly okay yeah so you're basically you're just talking about adding club soda to lemonade correct putting some strawberries in there and just making it look yeah muddling it make a fun use a fun glass i mean you know Mm -hmm. that's really when it comes down to a lot of cocktails are fairly easy based they put them out a pretty pretty glass put a little um you know twist of orange or something on it so don't forget to offer pretty glasses too so that um you know your non-drinkers your tumblers that's yeah, right yeah they don't want to just drink out of juice glasses so yeah yeah <laughs> okay good idea um another one that i love to make especially here in florida because it's you know it's very very refreshing is an agua fresca and that is basically chopped up and pureed watermelon and it is so refreshing i don't know if you've ever had a chance to have it I know I have looked at that recipe. Yeah. I've looked at that. I've read descriptions and I've meant to make it right. for myself because it looks fantastic. I always just end up eating the watermelon. <laughs> Seriously, the watermelon doesn't last long. You know, I right. end up eating the watermelon before I can sort of before you even get make to the blender. anything right. like, like that. Yeah. So um, maybe, you know, because watermelons, if you buy a, a big watermelon, they're, they're giant. So maybe you cut half for your guests to serve and the other half becomes agua fresca. Mm-hmm. And so basically that's just you um, cutting out the, the red part, you know, the, the actual meat of the, of the um, watermelon, and chopping that up into pieces. Now you want to get seedless watermelon. Right, right. So, and then putting that in a blender or a mini food, food processor, mm-hmm. whatever you have. And then you can really, that is good on its own. You can add a little simple syrup. You can add a little sugar if you don't have a simple syrup. And you could just serve that on its own. That's it. Yeah. So it's pureed watermelon. Yeah. You just pour it over ice. So. Right. So, but I like to jazz it up a little bit, mm-hmm. add in some, maybe some blueberries. Again, you could add any kind of fruit in there. So it could be a blueberry agua fresca. It can be um, a lime, you know, add a little lime to that. So the recipe that um, we'll share um, with with the listeners is a blueberry agua fresca, blueberry watermelon agua Great. fresca. So and that has lime juice, basil, um, and basil simple syrup and the blueberries. So that's all kind of blended together. You can strain it or not strain it. So it just depends upon your personal preference, whether you want the pulp of the of the fruit to be What's in there. What's the, the traditional way? To strain it? Probably or, to strain it because it's more of a like, beverage, you know, mm-hmm. just on its own. But I like the pulp and it's not it's not really thick. You know, it's it's just um, it's kind of you do have to stir it once in a while. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but and that's nice because you can serve that as a mocktail or you can also have, you know, some rum or something on the side that you could or tequila that you could add into that. Okay. So that yeah. would be good with some, a little rum or... A little rum or tequila. Yeah. 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 That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. It's always good to have a mocktail that, in a pinch, can become a cocktail. Right. And really, all as anything the, As the can. night wears on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. Mm-hmm. And then any really any of your cocktails or mocktails can can go either way. You just need to have the appropriate or preferred spirit on on tap. So, um and then a ni- another one which is a little bit different is a mango mule. Mm. Yeah. And so that, you know, kind of as a little um twist on a Moscow mule, but it adds in mango puree. And again, if you're feeling adventurous, you can slice up the mango, make your own puree, but you can also purchase mango puree in, in the cans, mo- many stores. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
And um, and then you just add a little honey to that, um, kind of muddle that up. You can add cucumber if you want to freshen it up a little bit, if you don't want it to be quite so sweet because mango can lean a little sweet. And then um, strain that and then just add ginger beer on top of that. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. So it's basically mango puree. Um, and then with some additions like you that you mentioned, right. if you want, if and you then want. the ginger beer. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then that's I would add a squeeze of lime. I would say. yeah, you yeah. just to freshen it up a little mm-hmm. bit. And again, you can add you know you could add orange to that, whatever you kind of have on hand. Most people aren't going to have like mangoes on <laughs> on hand mm-hmm. necessarily, but you could also add some chunks of if you wanted to make it really fun and interesting. You could add like a little garnish of um, a stick of you know mango and lime on the side. Oh, very yeah. pretty. Mm-hmm. And then you could put some vodka in that. You could, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see little... the way you're looking at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I you mean, could. I mean, if I somebody... want to yeah. be respectful of my mocktail <laughs> drinking friends, but <laughs> yes, yes. I never, you know, quite yeah. understood it. But, you know, I know it's a. People, People like it. Yeah. And, you know, my, my mother-in-law always orders uh, Virgin Mary. Yes. So yeah. that's the easiest thing. What's that? Just the, you know, whatever um, Bloody Mary makes you have on hand. Correct. And a stick of celery stick in there. Right, right. And those, I mean, and you've, I mean, you've seen the... Um, the Bloody Marys or the Virgin Marys, they come now. There was bacon hanging off them. There's shrimp. Yeah. It's like a little meal, really. I mean, you don't even need to eat with that anymore. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. could be good. Right. Yeah. I would, I'm a little traditionalist when it comes to my Bloody Marys or Virgin Marys. I like them clean. I like I love horseradish in mine. But um, I don't, I'm not a super fan of all these things hanging the off of it. Yeah. yeah. The, the they shrimp, make it into a know. shrimp cocktail. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, slash drink this also. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Good, ha, give me a good mix, a little Worcestershire and a, you know, a little extra, um, uh-huh. little extra horseradish, and I'm happy. Yeah. I'm getting thirsty, Crayon. No. <laughs> <laughs> Parched. Gosh. <laughs> We need a little bar cart in the studio. Yeah, where is our bar cart? <laughs> There's plenty of room in here. We could get one. All right. Any other mocktails you wanted to mention to me? So, again, you know, it's kind of um, any of whatever your traditional, your favorite um, cocktail is. Kind of that obviously isn't a martini that's purely alcohol-based. Um, you can really make a mocktail. So, um, but just the idea here is to offer your guests something a little bit different that aren't drinking. A little sophisticated. Right. Like you said, in a tumbler, slice of lime, you exactly. know, something adult. Right. Something fun. So they're mm-hmm. not just sitting there with a, you know, cup of water mm-hmm. and, you know, but, you know, offer some fun straws or little drink markers so they know their their drink. But just kind of offer something a little bit more fun and interesting and, and um, you know, don't assume that, you know, your one bottle of sparkling water is, or tonic is enough for them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Crail, thank you very much. Thank it's been you a so much. for having you. Absolutely. Thank you. Let's go get a drink now. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Crail Funch is the author of An Appealing Plan, A Year of Everyday Celebrations. To get Crail's recipe for watermelon blueberry agua fresca, visit our website, thezestpodcast.com. Tenny Flynn's cookbook, The Deep End of Flavor, Recipes and Stories from New Orleans' premier seafood chef, offers a blueprint for enjoying restaurant-quality seafood at home. The book contains more than 100 recipes, plus tips for buying and preparing seafood. Rule number one, don't overcook it. Chef Tenny spoke to our contributor Janet Keeler from New Orleans, where he co-owns the restaurant GW Fins. We're very lucky, you know, in the, the coastal south, uh, 66% of the edible fin fish in the U.S. of the varieties come out of the Gulf of Mexico. So I get access to, you know, as you do in Florida, wonderful seafood that I don't have to pay freight on. Now, a little bit of different, Louisiana is the number two tuna producer in the United States after Hawaii. And a lot of people, even from Louisiana, aren't aware of that uh, and the tuna boats go out of Dulac, which is about two hours south of New Orleans, and they are mainly going for yellowfin tuna. They also get swordfish, mahi, escalar, wahoo, uh, and some other tuna varieties as well. I did so not we know get, that about tuna. We I didn't get know that. Spectacular tuna. That's good to know. Another 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 interesting thing that's come out of the book. You know, all this seafood around, you know, from where you are and where we are here in Tampa Bay. But a lot of people are a little hesitant to to prepare it. Why do you think that is? Well, 
You know, and, and what I write in the book, uh, you know, for the general inscription is don't fear the fish. Um, it really is the easiest protein to cook. You know, develop a relationship with a fishmonger. Tell them, tell them when they did good. Tell them when they, you didn't enjoy it as much. And at least they'll tell you what came in that day. And some visual and, you know, olfactory ways of, uh, of picking out what the best thing there is. Taking that, cooking that. And also uh, certainly preach that, uh, you know, you almost have the guests seated at the table. You certainly have all the side you know, accompaniments uh, and sauces prepared before you even put the fish in the pan. Because, you know, overcooking is a cardinal sin. It's, it would be really a shame to, to get the, the nice piece of fish. And then, and the difference between uh, moist and juicy and flavorful and dried out and not very good is only about two or three minutes. <laughs> There's not not a not a lot of time there, is there? You know the book, well, but it it, it cooks. So, excuse me, it cooks so quickly that you know it's uh, you know most most thin you know fillets up to three quarters of an inch. You can cook in about six minutes, which is a very it's a very good uh, very good thing for our time. We're also rushed to make dinner, and it it is something that can get on the table pretty quickly. Do you have a do you have a, a favorite recipe in the book, or one that has special meaning to you? Well, certainly some of the ones from my childhood uh, um, in my dad's restaurant. But as far as, you know, the the, rest, the, the recipes, the type recipes that we do at GW Fins, um, I tend to like the full-flavored fish better. I like the cobia. I like the pompano. I like the mackerel. Um, I mean, I like milder fish as well, but there's just something about those, uh, those fat fish I really enjoy. Yeah. Uh, our spear fisherman brought us uh, some barracuda and uh, and cobia the day before yesterday, and there's just nothing like those fish right out of the water on the grill. Or pompano, I mean, that's hands down. Pompano is, uh, I mean, a little bit of salt is really all you need with that fish. And I like the uh, I like the Asian salad garnishes. The uh, it's it's a it's like a green papaya. Uh, that you might green papaya salad that you might get in in Thailand, but we make it with uh, what we call merlotons, which the rest of the world calls chayote squash, um, which are very uh, very abundant here. They're a little bit more tender than the green papaya, but it's the same. It's the same uh, fish sauce, lime juice, sugar, chilies, uh, dried shrimp. You know, so you get you get heat, you get acidity, you get a little bit of funk from the shrimp and uh, it mixes all all together, and it's just really, really good with a fat fish. Well, that sounds delicious. I know I when I see pompano on me- menus, I often order it because you don't see it all the time. So that's a that's a that's a nice surprise when you go into a restaurant and they have that. You know, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us, and I wish you a lot of luck with it. It's a beautiful book, and I, I can't wait to try some more recipes. Thank you. our contributor Janet Keeler speaking with Chef Tenny Flynn, who co-authored The Deep End of Flavor with Susan Puckett. You can find Tenny's recipe for smoked fish dip that's worthy of serving to company on our website, thezestpodcast.com. That's it for today. We'd love for you to subscribe to The Zest Podcast. It's free, and that way you never miss an episode. You can subscribe on iTunes or Google Play or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Robin Sussingham. Dalia Colon and I produce The Zest with help from Megan Trimble, Mark Hayes, and Craig George. The Zest is a production of WUSF Public Media.